Roe v. Wade was overturned. And regardless of what side of this issue you're on, I want to talk about a commandment of God that would make abortion as a practice unnecessary in many instances. It's called the law of chastity. According to this law, men and women share an equal responsibility in abstaining from sexual relations until they are legally and lawfully married. Imagine how different this world would be if we all kept this commandment. This world is possible, and it starts with our personal choices. And that's why I speak to the youth when I say you have the power to cultivate a better world as you boldly live the law of chastity and invite others to do the same. If you have stayed strong in keeping this commandment, awesome. Keep going. Invite others to do the same. If you have broken this commandment, take heart. You can repent. When we are baptized, we come out pure and clean, as if we've never done anything wrong. But after baptism, do we still make mistakes? Yes. When you partake of the sacrament, you are renewing that baptismal covenant. You are leaving what you've done wrong behind you and having the power to move forward. Do the steps you need to do so you can partake of the sacrament again. If you live the law of chastity, you have the freedom to avoid being in a situation where an abortion seems necessary. None of what I say can be forced. We all have the freedom to choose. That We can be an example. We can invite. And in so doing, we can be a light to others. If our friends choose to live the law of chastity, they'll be more prepared to take on a child. They'll be less likely to experience the heartbreak of giving your all to someone who is untrue to you. And if you practice self-mastery before marriage, you are more likely to maintain that after marriage. As we live the law of chastity, we can cultivate a stronger, better, healthier world, and we can make a lot of the issues surrounding Roe v. Wade ancient history.